Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So I never shared a video 15 hours ago called Why I Don't Like Gus Johnson. Now, I watched the whole video. I went over to Sabrina's channel, subscribed and liked, full support, talked to my cousin, and I left a comment about my cousin and my story on what happened to her. She's here, and she is perfectly okay with me telling this story. So here's the comment that I left under I Never's video. If you hear the weed eat in the background, I'm sorry, but it's got to be done. Anyways, I left a comment saying, My cousin was attacked or worded while walking home from work one night. Her boyfriend was supposed to pick her up from work, but he went out with his boys and he forgot her. And he did. He forgot to pick her up. He, he never cared. After a few weeks, she found out she was pregnant. She told her boyfriend that she had been R-worded and that she was pregnant. He demanded that she get an abortion and told her not to tell anyone. He didn't want this baby either way, whether it was his or not. He wouldn't take her to get the abortion, but demanded she go or he would break up with her. Demanded she tell no one of the R-word because he would be embarrassed for everyone to know how nasty she is. And how she let herself get R-worded. My cousin is very tender-hearted. She gives too many chances and gives everyone the benefit of the doubt. And she is a truly sweet, amazing person. <clears throat> she asked me to go, so I offered to drive her three hours there, three hours back, stay until it was over, and bring her back to him, back to his house. What made the abortion even harder was a church was protesting outside the abortion clinic, calling women murderers, holding up signs that says, Your rape baby loves you. God is watching you. Baby killer. Abortion is murder. You will burn in hell. How do you sleep at night? And there were a lot more than that. It was a groups of people. And they were just blocking the doors. We had to like try to push through them to get in there. And they would just shove the signs in your face, yelling and screaming, You're, you're a baby killer and this and that. And we both were like, like, this shouldn't be allowed in a parking lot right in front of the door. <clears throat> so, you will burn in hell. How do you sleep at night, etc. My cousin started crying and having panic attacks. She was raised Southern Baptist, so the signs hit hard. Getting through that crowd of protesters was scary. <clears throat> Once we got inside, the receptionist was very hateful with an attitude. She snatched the money from her hand. The nurses were very nice. They told us that they we weren't allowed to see the ultrasound because it makes the process harder. We heard the heartbeat and both of us started crying. They do ask you over and over to be sure because it is a huge life to see, uh, life changing decision. The doctors did it and after a while we left. Her boyfriend didn't text, call, or email not one time to check on her. He was making TikToks with his friends. I didn't push her to break up with him because that never works. I texted I texted him asking if he would pick her up some um, her meds from the pharmacy, which was located beside his job. He said no, he wouldn't be picking up. He dumped her that night through text message after five years of being together. He said he wanted her stuff out. Said he'd been seeing someone else and called her a baby killing, you know, the a, the W-H-O word. Yes, this man is a narcissist. She had a full-blown breakdown. She moved in with me that night. I had a big three-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment. She would hear noises and lock herself in the bathroom with a golf club for hours. She slept in my bed for months, couldn't shower, use the bathroom, walk the dog, or be alone out of fear of being attacked again. As soon as she stopped bleeding, he began texting one in booty calls. When she said no, he called her terrible names. He threatened to tell people that she got R-worded, pregnant, had an abortion, called her a baby killer, and he demanded that she get and he's the one that demanded she get the ab abortion in the first place. He told his Facebook friends that she killed his innocent baby and he began using her trauma for his sympathy. Now, I let a lot of stuff slide because she asked me to stay out of it. But when he did that, I snapped. I exposed all his behavior on Facebook. This girl was broken. This girl was so broken, felt guilty, and blaming herself. She constantly thought somebody was breaking in the house or somebody was watching us. She tried to unalive herself by with an electrical cord. I found her just as she passed out. <clears throat> I 
I took her to the hospital where I took her to the hospital who recommended mental health treatment. So we began intense therapy, got hobbies. I opened up a pet rescue where she could work with the animals. We never know what someone is going through or how close to the edge some are. People like Gus Johnson and this guy suck. <clears throat> They make a bad situation even more horrible. They abandon their partners. They are selfish and narcissistic a-holes. We are supposed to support our partners, especially in their time of need. Luckily, my cousin had me, but a lot of people don't have anyone to help them. Sorry this was so long. Just want to help people understand they are not alone in this. It is so hard. I just left that comment a few minutes ago. That video... That video, as soon as I finished watching it, because I always finish a video before I comment, I went directly over Sabrina's video, her channel, and I subscribed, and I listened and watched her entire video. I left my comment, and I just, it really just took me back into that time of watching my cousin, my best friend, who I've known my whole life, it took me to a time where she was so broken and brokenhearted and blaming herself. She felt guilty every day. This was such a hard time in her life, such a hard decision. She ended up with an eating um, ED. She went through a lot, and we both still go through therapy now. She is now with someone else and completely happy and has a whole new life. Everything's way better. She's doing great. But back then, during those years, we both were going through a lot. And I was at one of my lowest points, like right after this happened. I went through a similar situation, no support. We both had each other. But my point of this is, a lot of people don't have support, y'all. We have to be kind. We have to... We got to influence others to start being more kind. Be kind. You don't know how close to the edge somebody is. You don't know how what somebody's struggling with. You get on TikTok and you see these horrible comments, this hate, this bullying, all these horrible things people are saying to people they don't know or do know, and they don't care. They don't stop and think, hey, wait a minute, is this person on the edge right now? I don't know what they're going through in their personal life. They could be about to snap. We don't think about that. Stop and think about it before you say negative, hateful stuff to someone. Before you treat someone that way. And I'm going to tell you something. Karma is real because her ex-boyfriend, his life has been no better. His life has only gotten worse since then. He ended up getting someone else pregnant. And they took him out on child support. He went to jail for child support. And he's been in and out of jail for some time. His life has went completely downhill. I believe in karma. I'm not saying that we're saints or anything like that, but I'm telling you, I think if you intentionally hurt someone, karma's going to come back and get you at some point. Now, I'm on TikTok a lot. Y'all know that. Lily Girl 1985. We're almost at 30K. I'm so proud. We share a lot of true crime videos, a lot of R word cases, a lot of A B U S E cases. We do a lot of that, and we're trying to help others see that they're not alone. We're trying to share people's cases so we can help others to not be hurt and to be aware of things that are going on, and we're trying to get cases that have went cold back out, trying to get the light shine back on them. And people who need help, we're trying to get them help. And to the bullies, we're trying to stop them. Yeah, we're trying to stop the bullies. We're trying to help as many people as we can. And there's a lot of people in this world that need help right now. And the last thing we need is hate. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're with somebody that you don't love, somebody that you're just using for whatever reason, it's not cool. Because like what happened to her and it's happened to me. Somebody's with you for some time. They cheat on you. They lie to you. They A-B-U-S-E-U, D, you know, domestic V, things like that. Do better. Get help and do better. Don't use people. Don't do these things to people. You don't know. You could be the reason that somebody unalives themselves. You could be the reason that someone snaps because of your comment, because of how you treated them. We need to love and support each other. I don't know why people can't just do better. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't understand it. But I'm going to tell you this. I really appreciate I never sharing that video. I feel like 
people with bigger platforms who are sharing awareness help so much because they have a wider audience to get to. You know, like me, I got a thousand subscribers on here. I reach a few, maybe 20, 10, 20, and that's great. That was 10, 20 people that I did reach. But people like I never who have a wider audience can reach so many more. On TikTok, I reach thousands of people daily, and that's amazing to me, and I'm so appreciative for it to help so many people. We have donated so much food, clothes, toys, you know, We've done a lot, and we're going to continue to do a lot, and we're going to continue to shine a light on these cases, and we're going to help victims get their word and their story out here. We're going to stay strong. We're not going to be silenced. And the trolls, we're working on the trolls right now. We're going to, hopefully, we'll, hopefully these platforms will have a better system of getting the trolls deleted off these accounts. A lot of these accounts don't have no profile picture, no videos. They just come on here, and they hate people. They just spread hate. And apps like TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, they need to start deleting those accounts. As soon as that's reported and they see there's the comment, the racist comment or whatever it may be, delete that account. Hopefully that'll happen one day. I don't know. But anyways, we just wanted to, you know, just wanted to share this and let you know you are not alone. We support you. And we know what you're going through. We're here for you. If you need somebody to talk to, message me. I'm on Twitter, I'm on TikTok, YouTube, comment down below. You don't have to subscribe, you don't have to follow. But if you need somebody to talk to, message me. And I'm sorry to everyone who is going through anything right now. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry people hurt you and I'm sorry people use you. And I, I've been done that way too many times. I'm sorry. I'm sorry this happens. I'm going to do better myself i'm going to start doing better and i'm going to start using my platforms to share awareness even more and i'm going to quit letting these trolls bring me down with their hate and i'm going to start sharing more cases i'm going to start sharing more awareness and charities and donations because y'all know i love doing charities and i love doing like giveaways i love donating especially like right now with christmas toys for tots st jude's hospital ronald mcdonald house we have so many that we're going to donate to and i'm so excited <laughs> Anyway, Sabrina, I never, we love y'all. We support y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you for sharing your stories. Bye.